it gives me great pleasure to welcome Terrence Hayes. All right. <clears throat> Often over the years, I've been asked why a group of black poets would call itself Cave Canem. It's Latin. <laughs> because blackness, like poetry, means different things, I like to say. For example, once upon a time, two black poets visiting the lost city of Pompeii entered the house of the tragic poet and saw upon entering a sign reading Cave Canem on the gate. Later, when they had the idea for a retreat for black poets, that's what they called it, Cave Canem, Latin for beware of the dog. What does it mean to be the dog guarding the house of poetry? Maybe Toy Derricott and Cornelius Eady never paused to ask such a question, or 20 years later, they are still asking the question. Because blackness, like poetry, means many things, they welcomed black poets of every shade and age from everywhere in the middle of nowhere, spoken worders, academics, experimentalists, formalists, students and professors, ex-cons, exiles, weirdos, librarians, atheists, Yoruba priests and priestesses. I ain't bullshitting. The initial gathering of 26 poets included the 82-year-old granddaughter of a Confederate general, as well as a former disc jockey who decided to live in homeless shelters so he'd have time studying to become a poet. Now, with well over 300 fellows, Cave Canem is one of the most diverse, one of the most diverse poetry organizations in the, in the country. In 1968, when a white policeman erroneously shot 33-year-old black poet Henry Dumas in a subway station in Harlem, no one imagined a nation of black poets could exist. It's such a futuristic idea, a world in which the descendants of slaves become poets. Elizabeth Bishop said poetry is a way of thinking with one's feelings. And Lucille Clifton, one of Cave Canem's first teachers, one of the first poets to see the value of such a place, famously wrote, come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. Imagine 20 years of thinking with one's feelings while something is trying to kill you. All kinds of magical things open up in such a place. It happens during the fellows' readings sometimes. For fellows' readings, poets age 18 to 88, like I say, all styles and dispositions get up to the open mic to read a poem. It's amazing. The summer I taught there, there was this brother from Chicago, Avery, a strange, brilliant brother tuned to some supernatural frequency a cross between Sun Ra and Donnie Hathaway. So when Avery's turn to share a poem came, he started singing. Where were you when they killed that boy? Where were you when they killed that boy? I thought he was just gonna sing a little bit before the poem, but he went on like that, singing the blues an Emmett Till gospel, like five or six minutes, walking around the room like he was possessed. Would you kill the men who killed that boy, he was singing. Would you kill for that boy? Would you kill for that boy? Would you live for that boy? Would you live for that boy? Church. He was sweating and panting when he was done. And so I, I tried to breathe and I couldn't breathe. I started heading for the door. I left the room and I found myself kneeling. I don't know how long. I cussed him alone in the darkness outside. Motherfucker. 
And when I was done, I straightened my face and I was about to head back inside to the reading when I was met by a crowd of people who were weeping and hyperventilating. I thought I was the only one. He cleared the room. So maybe half an hour later, the reading continued. No one could say what had happened exactly. And even this here is just about 5% of what happened. What would happen if you brought a bunch of black poets together in a safe place? If you became the black and faithful dog guarding that place, what would happen? We know the poets affiliated with such a place would flourish because they have. But we also know many more brilliant, unaffiliated black poets remain imperiled or overlooked or just willfully writing alone. Writing is lonely all the time. No organization can change that. But Cave Canem is a kind of fortification. Even if you are not a poet or black, it is a fortification of your language, your history, your future. We have seen a black president and we are seeing what kind of president comes after a black president. We've seen and we still are seeing black men and women killed by people sworn to protect them. Our lives remain in danger, which is to say your lives remain in danger. We need arts organizations like Cave Canem, organizations that put writers in schools, homeless shelters, prisons, and myriad underserved communities. Sometimes your living room is an underserved community. Nonprofit arts organizations need your support, your loyalty, your bark, and your bike. We must be the dogs guarding the house. We are here tonight to say thank you for your work, Toy and Cornelius. Thank you. You've done a good job. You have made possible so many lives, most of which my own. Please come on up. <laughs>